Hi, it's Katrina. From giant eyeballs to deadly hot tubs, here are 10 of the strangest things discovered in American waters. Number 10. The Lost Sea Located deep inside a mountain near Sweetwater, Tennessee, is the Lost Sea. The Guinness Book of World Records calls it America's largest underground lake, and it is the world's second largest non-subglacial underground lake. This enormous lake is part of a cave system known as Craighead Caverns. The visible surface of the lake measures 800 feet long and 220 feet wide. That's as far as we can see just with the naked eye. The rest of this extraordinary natural landmark is below the surface and currently being explored by divers. The exploration has covered a further 13 acres and may have found a series of mysterious rooms. Artifacts show that the Cherokee used to use these spaces and the first white settlers also used the rooms to store food and gunpowder. The divers and researchers aren't sure if these caves were carved out by an ancient group of people or if they were formed naturally. The lake is filled with trout and the area is known for its cave flowers. Cave flowers, or anthodites, have a needle-like structure and the ones by the Lost Sea are very rare. There are daily tours where you can take a walk and boat ride around the cave. It's definitely on my bucket list. Number 9. Sea Life Tsunami a more recent strange discovery is the arrival of new organisms popping up on American shores. Animals native to Japan are showing up in America after the earthquake and subsequent 40-meter-high tsunami in 2011. The earthquake created devastation on an epic scale, but no one could have predicted the effect the tsunami had on Japanese sea life. In locations such as Washington State and Oregon, all kinds of items washed up, from tiny pieces of plastic to an entire dock. These items have carried a reported 289 species across the water from one nation to another. Some of their journeys have taken as long as two years. The species include mussels and a group of striped beakfish. In fact, a specimen of the beakfish was kept and named the tsunami fish because of the incredible way it was raised aboard a fishing boat set out to sea by the earthquake. There's a worrying element behind this fascinating development. With big infrastructures on the world's coastlines, the amount of stuff that can be washed away by a tsunami is pretty massive. Much of this material is plastic and highly durable. Combine that with the enormous pollution in our oceans and sea life has a selection of ready-made transport to choose from, if it doesn't kill them first. It's kind of scary how all kinds of plastics and metals have made it easier for invasive species to travel across the ocean. These transports are unlikely to decay anytime soon, since plastic pretty much lasts forever. More unexpected things could arrive on U.S. shores over the coming years, and the U.S. ecosystem could get entirely out of whack. Number 8. Manganese Balls A group of German scientists discovered something very unusual on the Atlantic Ocean floor in 2015. They were using an epibenthic sled, which is a fancy name for a sample collecting apparatus which is dragged along the bottom. To their surprise, the sled collected a payload of manganese nodules. These objects are mainly ball-shaped and are formed when metal ore crystallizes onto things like fossils and rocks. You would normally see balls of that size in regions like the Pacific, so to find them in the Atlantic was quite an eye-opener. They carry important archaeological and geological information because they are thought to form over millions of years. They can be as small as a golf ball or as big as a bowling ball. As well as manganese, the balls contain other metals such as zinc or cobalt, but that isn't the end of the story. The scientists found a huge number of the balls forming an enormous field. This is great news for tech companies because the metals are a vital element in the manufacture of things like smartphones. Next time you're using your phone, think about what it takes to get that device to work the way it does. Number 7. Blackbeard's Cannons These strange-looking cylinders might look like something left over by an alien civilization, but it turns out that these objects covered in barnacles are actually cannons from the wreck of a famous ship. These early 18th century artifacts have confirmed that explorers from Intersol Inc. have found the legendary Queen Anne's Revenge off the coast of North Carolina. The Queen Anne's Revenge belonged to the notorious pirate Blackbeard, a.k.a. Edward Teach. In 1717, Blackbeard seized a French slave ship called La Concorde and converted it into the Queen Anne's Revenge. Because it was so fast, it terrorized the sea. Although it was already well armed, Blackbeard tricked it out with even more cannons and used it to attack other boats in the Caribbean. Its success was short-lived, however, since just a few months later, Blackbeard grounded the ship, probably on purpose. He wanted to maroon his fellow pirates because there were just too many of them. He was soon killed by the Royal Navy and his severed head was taken to the governor of Virginia. 
In 1966, Intersol discovered the wreck at an inlet in Beaufort. The boat's remains lay in 25 feet of water, and most of it was buried in sand. For years, this epic excavation has been taking place involving archaeologists, the Coast Guard, Intersol, and the North Carolina Department of Natural Resources. To date, 23 cannons have been recovered. If you want to see two of the cannons for yourself, they are on display at the North Carolina Maritime Museum. Examples from Blackbeard's ship and his plunder are available to visit across the state. Intersol and the state of North Carolina have been in lawsuits ever since, trying to determine who gets a cut of the profits. Number 6. Underwater Stonehenge Stonehenge isn't just a famous site in England. In 2007, traces of prehistoric life were discovered in the U.S. The unlikely location was Lake Michigan. Archaeologists from Northwest Michigan University were supposedly scanning the depths of Grand Traverse Bay with sonar when they saw two totally unexpected things. The first was an arrangement of stones that appeared to resemble a place of druid worship. The second was a large boulder around 4 feet high and 5 feet long. The boulder really got their attention because it had what looked like a petroglyph or carving of a mastodon on it. Mastodons were elephant-like mammals who are now long extinct. This find has yet to be confirmed as an actual prehistoric discovery. If verified, the site could have existed for many thousands of years and could change our perception of early history. The lack of any further information on Lake Michigan's Stonehenge has led some to think that this is a hoax. It has been very underreported, and without further proof, it is hard to say what these formations actually are. Number 5. A Giant Eye a man on Pompano Beach, Florida discovered an eye the size of a softball in 2012. Supposedly, it was just floating around in the water, which is not really that common. Nobody knew who this strange body part belonged to since no remains of a body were found, so the internet went wild with speculation as to where it came from. Some thought the eye belonged to the deep sea squid. While that was a possible candidate, it turns out that the eye of a deep sea squid is a lot bigger. They can actually get to be as large as a basketball. Most biologists concluded that the eye was that of a swordfish or a marlin. Swordfish can weigh as much as 1,100 pounds, so it's no wonder their eyes are so big. You wouldn't know it from the outside as the scale of the eye is hidden inside the swordfish's head. Experts concluded the eye had been cut out by a fisherman and thrown into the sea, because like I said, it's not normal to find random eyeballs floating around in the ocean. I guess when it comes to swordfish, the eyeball isn't the tastiest part. Number 4. The Hot Tub of Despair this dramatically named Hot Tub of Despair earns its name because this underwater lake will kill almost everything that falls inside. Discovered 3,300 feet below the surface of the Gulf of Mexico, the lake is made up of brine and methane and pretty toxic to unsuspecting crabs that have fallen in and gotten pickled. The hot tub of despair was formed over millions of years. The older, shallower gulf evaporated, leaving behind large amounts of salt. The salt was then covered by sediments. When the salt moves, it can crack the sediments, releasing brine and other things like oil into the water. Because the brine is a different consistency, it creates its own body of water. Sometimes brine lakes are so dense, scientists can land human-occupied vehicles on top of it. So technically, you are landing a sub on a lake or a pool at the bottom of the deep sea. Sea. Pretty abstract, huh? These pools don't mix with the seawater around it and can actually create waterfalls and rivers underwater. Number 3. Underwater Graveyard The Marshall Islands became independent from the United States in 1986. Despite this, America's legacy lives on, though many aren't happy about it. During World War II, there was a lot of nuclear testing in the area, which still impacts on the environment to this day. And under the water is a strange graveyard of hundreds of aircraft left over from the conflict. These were deliberately dumped in the ocean at the end of the war by the U.S. Navy when they left the islands. Some of these planes are design classics. The B-25 Mitchell bomber and the Grumman TBF Avenger, a torpedo bomber, are two of the legendary fighters craft now lying in the depths. Amazingly, many of them have remained intact since they were sunk in perfect condition, and now they are surrounded by coral and fish. As you can imagine, the area is a favorite for divers since it is so unique and a little spooky. Number 2. The Snailfish this species of fish might not sound like much, but this little guy was caught at 7,966 meters deep in the Mariana Trench. It is the world's newest, deepest living fish. Officially called Pseudolaparis swirae, after the 19th century naval pioneer Herbert Swire, it is about twice the length of a cigar and has translucent skin. You can even see its liver from the outside. 
There's a lot of pressure living in the Mariana Trench, and I don't mean daily stress. I mean massive amounts of water pressure, some 8,000 meters below the surface. Down there, you'd have to be able to take the pressure equal to the weight of over 1,600 elephants to survive. Scientists were finally able to capture this hardy creature for analysis, a world first for sea life at that depth using baited camera traps. The snailfish feeds on crustaceans and lays eggs just a centimeter wide. It's been added to the 350 species of snailfish that have been identified around the world. Life in the trenches is no small feat. Number 1. Underwater UFO in 2017, Google Maps was used to spot a large circular object that appears to be moving in the Pacific off the California coast. This large disk is estimated to be over two and a half miles in diameter and looks like it has left miles and miles of tracks behind it as it moves along. Some people think that these marks are trenches or fortifications of some kind, but others think that it may be something a bit more worrisome. The assumption is that there are tracks around it, meaning it is moving. So if it is moving, why is it moving and what the heck is it? Alien investigators Secure Team 10 say that there is a lot of mysterious UFO phenomenon happening in the ocean and that it would be a perfect place for an alien civilization to be hiding. Since only about 10% of our oceans have been explored, they claim that there are lots of things going on underwater that we are unaware of. This object reminded people of the famous Baltic Sea Anomaly of 2011, where an object shaped like the Millennium Falcon was detected. Like that case, no definitive conclusion has been reached. While it's unlikely this is an alien spaceship, the images certainly can challenge your imagination. Thanks for watching! Any other strange things you found in the water? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe before you leave, and I'll see you soon! Bye!